Hi, welcome back to our series Buddhism 101. Today we will be discussing the concept of morality in a Buddhist concept, context. Uh, morality in Buddhism, as with uh, generosity, as with, with all of the different concepts we'll be studying, has always a lot more to do with the effect that it has on one's own person than on other people. So we're not concerned so much with the result of our actions on other people as we are concerned with the result of our actions on our own mind. We're also not concerned in, moral, in, in regards to morality uh, about judgment from others uh, so much as we're concerned with, again, the effect that the, the judgment of our, from ourselves and the effect that, um, or the reaction that we have to our actions. So in this, con in this sense, morality is uh, concerned with the uh, effect that unwholesome deeds have, the negative effect that unwholesome deeds will have on your mind when you engage in unwholesome speech or unwholesome action or even unwholesome thought, it's something that affects you and takes you away from a centered, objective, clear state of mind, which is what we're trying to create. Uh, and the third thing is that morality is not um, specifically concerned with rules or, or uh, principles. It's, um, so so the, uh, the first aspect of morality that I'll be talking about today is the rules, but morality uh, as a concept in Buddhism or, or the idea of morality in Buddhism has much more to do with the general state of mind that uh, gives rise to concentration. Morality is considered to be that which uh, focuses the mind, that which leads the mind to become uh, focused and, and able to see things clearly as they are. But uh, today I'll be talking about specifically that aspect of morality that is the, the rules or the precepts that we take on uh, to refrain from as Buddhists. And these can be considered kind of like um, fence posts. So you want to set up a clear boundary for yourself. It's kind of like a fence where outside of that you don't trespass. And the first thing you do when you set up a fence is you, you, put up, you put up fence posts. Now the fence posts themselves won't keep anything in or out, uh, but they set, a, they set a marker. So these are clear um, indicators or markers of, of where the boundary exists. So for example, the, the basic Buddhist morality of the five precepts, not to kill, not to steal, not to cheat, not to lie, and not to take drugs and alcohol. These, these, of course, are, are not a comprehensive or an exhaustive list of things that one shouldn't do. You, you could never come up with such a list because, again, morality isn't the actions themselves, it's the intentions behind them. But they do make up a, a, a list of, uh, of guidelines that give you some idea of where the boundaries exist for, um, b between moral and immoral, or between good for you and bad for you. So the, the understanding is that things like killing are bad for you. Killing is something that's very uh, unwholesome and, and, and uh, detrimental to one's own spiritual well-being. Uh, stealing as well is, some, is, is in the same category. Cheating in the sense of cheating on a loved one uh, or uh, uh, breaking up someone else's marriage or relationship. Uh, lying, uh, um, deceiving others and using intoxicants which cloud the mind, all have the effect of creating states of mind that are antithetical to the meditation practice, to, to, to clarity of mind and to purity and to freedom from suffering. They cloud the mind, they create um, states of lust, states of uh, hatred and uh, states of fear, states of worry and remorse and guilt and so on. So they're, they're generally considered to be bad. Of course, as I said, this isn't ex exhaustive, so hurting other people is also unwholesome, but it's not in this list. These are, in one sense, a, a, a guide for the extreme, um, the most extreme immoral state. So anything beyond this, or, or, or these, are, these are the most extreme that, that, are, are, that really have to be done away with even before you start to practice. So again, we're dealing with concept, concepts here that are preliminary. Before you begin to practice, you actually do need morality, and, and at least to the extent of, of this first aspect of morality, of keeping these precepts. Anyone who's going to 
um, begin to cultivate wholesomeness has to be assured of has to has to assure assure themselves that they can keep these five precepts uh, if if they're constantly engaging in breaking these precepts they will be unable ever to um, to cultivate concentration and wisdom so that's the first step now the next um, the, the next set once you begin to practice meditation you want to go a little bit further so you bring the you bring the fence in closer, the boundary in, in closer, and you would take eight precepts. So a person who begins to practice, actually actively practice meditation, um, would, would it be expected to keep uh, more than just the five precepts? So the third precept is, is not to, to cheat on others. Well, this changes, and instead of not just cheating on others, we don't uh, engage in sexual or romantic activity at all. Uh, during the meditation practice, because again, this is something that um, distracts you from the meditation practice. Now we're not talking about things that in a worldly sense would be considered immoral, but we're talking about things that very much can and will get in the way of your meditation practice, distracting you, creating um, greater uh, addiction and clinging and, 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 uh, and so on. And then we add three more precepts on top of that that we, we undertake to keep. So the sixth one is we undertake to only eat once a day or, or during the morning hours. We have enough food during the morning to keep us alive um, without getting uh, obsess, obsessing over food or, or um, comforting ourselves with food. Uh, simply having enough just to stay alive, just to stay um, healthy enough to practice meditation. The seventh one we take is to uh, discard any entertainment or beautification. So we don't engage in, we don't listen to music, we don't sing, we don't dance, we don't watch shows or um, read uh, fiction or, or, or uh, surf the internet, you know, all sorts of things that uh, during a meditation course will distract you from your meditation practice, even though uh, in a worldly sense they're not, strictly, strictly speaking, immoral. And uh, we don't beautify ourselves, we, we give up using makeup and beautiful clothes and, and uh, trying to make ourselves somehow attractive, which of course distracts ourselves and distracts other people um, and, and keeps us tied to this um, the world of romance and, and, and attraction and so on. And the eighth one is we undertake to sleep on uh, a simple bedding, maybe sleeping on the floor or on a rug or something like that, and sleeping a minimum. So we recommend meditators to only sleep six hours or less during a meditation course. So, so here we are bringing the, 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 um, the, the markers in closer. We're still not talking about, strictly speaking, morality, which comes from the meditation practice itself. But by, by doing, away from, from doing away with all of these things, keeping away from all of these uh, activities, we support our meditation and are able to gain uh, greater states of concentration and thereby wisdom. Finally, if you want to take up the life of a meditator, uh, if you want to take up the, of a Buddhist life, you would go one step further and uh, give up all uh, economy or all commerce. You know? So you would refrain from using money, refrain from buying and selling, refrain from um, trading even, uh, any, any sort of economic activity whatsoever, and you would live the life of a uh, religious person, a, a, uh, a monk, so you would uh, use use an alms bowl and and receive uh, the, the food that people give you and so on and and so so it starts by adding one more precept of not using money which which is the are the precepts of a novice monk and eventually once you're trained in that you would begin to take on this whole this whole list of rules which um, serve to to focus the the, uh, the mind or the meditator's mind on the practice and keep one away from uh, worldly thing, worldly endeavors and, and pursuits and, and, uh, and distractions. And so, so there are 227 rules of the bhikkhus, 311 of the bhikkhunis, and then you have hundreds of more. It, it becomes an endless list of, of rules where you live a, a prescribed life that keeps you on the straight and narrow. And uh, so all of these rules uh, breaking them is not a sign that you're you're going to to go to hell or that or that you're Im 
unable, going to be unable to meditate, you can always decide to take these again. They're, 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 they're guidelines, they're fence posts. So straying outside of them is going to be to your detriment. Staying inside of them is going to be to your, to your benefit and, and uh, support for the meditation practice. So this is the first aspect of morality that most people think of when they, uh, when they think of morality is, is the idea of rules. So there are lots of rules that you can follow, but again, they're, not, they're, they're only the one aspect of morality. Important, useful, uh, and so a good introduction to the concept of Buddhist morality. Beyond this, um, there aren't any other rules that we have to keep. You don't have to uh, bow down to, in this way or, or um, chant in that way or light in, incense or this or that. We have very simple rules that are based on morality and based on how they affect your mind uh, during your meditation practice. So that's the first aspect of morality, another uh, part of our series on Buddhism 101. Tomorrow we'll be talking about the second aspect of morality. Thank you.